Hi, it's Dr. John Berardi here with Competitor.com, and today I'd like to talk about the best performance enhancing supplement you're probably not using, caffeine. Now many of you probably are regular coffee drinkers, which I think you should actually change up, switching to tea instead, but that's another topic for another day. You see, today we're talking about caffeine as a performance enhancing or ergogenic aid. And you only really get that effect when you take supplemental caffeine, either caffeine tablets or caffeine through energy drinks. That's right, the research is showing that coffee doesn't reliably produce the same performance enhancing benefit as pure caffeine. So what kind of benefits are we talking here? Well, caffeine has been shown to increase muscle force and to release fat from adipose tissue, leading to increased fat burning and glycogen sparing during exercise. Further, caffeine stimulates the central nervous system, leading to a lower perception of effort during competition. In the 40 or so studies looking at the effects of caffeine on endurance performance, the average benefit has been about 20%, which is huge, making caffeine the most powerful legal ergogenic aid available. But again, to get these benefits, you have to use the right form of caffeine in the right dose. Generally, the research shows that about three to six milligrams per kilogram of body weight taken one hour before exercise promotes the biggest benefits. For a 150 pound person, this would be 210 milligrams on the low end, which is equivalent to about three cans of Red Bull, and 420 milligrams on the high end, which would be way too many cans of Red Bull. At that point, you'd choose one to two 200 milligram caffeine tablets, and you'd take them about one hour before competition. So what about side effects? Well, if you overdo it, acute problems can include gastrointestinal distress, tremors, impaired motor control, and insomnia. So make sure you practice your caffeine strategy once before race day. As a side note, using caffeine this way shouldn't be a regular thing. Chronic high caffeine intake can lead to certain cancers, cardiovascular disease, and poor glucose tolerance. So make sure that during regular training conditions, caffeine intake is low. Only when a big race is coming up should you give this strategy a try. In the meantime, continue to eat well and train hard, and I'll see you next time on Eat and Run.